five BP Guru. It's been a long time since uh, I've been uh, in this project because uh, a lot of things are happening at the moment for me uh, in in life and also uh, with some of my projects. And it's just taking up a lot of my time. So I, I've had to kind of delay doing a new video. Uh, so I do apologize for that. Uh, but we're back today in in our FPS tutorial. Uh, you probably remember that fun little random tutorial I did uh, a few weeks back now where this thing kind of just follows you around when you're when you're not looking at it. There we go. Um, so I thought uh, the next one thing I want to do, so so we've been kind of knocking out thing, different kind of types of interactions. Uh, I want to do uh, NPCs next. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to actually move some things around. So now that we're not testing our jump animation anymore, I'm going to bring our player start back down to here. There we go. Let's um, move it around. Uh, let's make it face the way we want to actually go. And um, what we're going to do is we're just going to set up a very basic NPC, uh, which is just going to... Uh, Give us a couple of lines, right? Um, some sort of world building information, if you will. So we'll put our player start there so that we actually start in here. Uh, the other thing I'm also going to do is I don't want that thing to start moving when um, uh, I'm in here. I don't want it to start walking in and just block the gate. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to find our um, nav mesh. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just move it along so it does not come into this room so the idea is that if there's no nav mesh this thing doesn't know to move so if i'm sat out of these this nav mesh bounds it doesn't know how to get to me so it doesn't bother trying and we're going to test this so i'm not looking at it and if i walk over here it doesn't know that i'm actually within its navical bounds so it doesn't know that i'm actually kind of anywhere right now so if i open this gate and I walk into the nav mesh bands, it turns to me because it now knows where I am. So it knows how to get to me. See? And if I allow it to continue walking while I'm walking, it will stop there. But when I move out of this nav mesh bands and I start kind of doing my own thing in my own safe area, it's not moving anymore because, it's again, it's lost me. It's kind of like, oh, he's disappeared from the world. So I thought that was kind of, oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, wait there. It might be because the nav mesh bounds is actually where the door is. That might be the problem here. I don't know. Let's see where I actually left it. Um, no, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, maybe it does still know where I am. Once I've entered that nav mesh bounds, maybe it does know where I am. But, but what, I, what, I, what I want to accomplish today, this actually works to me not being on the nav mesh bounds to begin with. But you could see it couldn't go any further than this anyway. So it'll never be able to go past this point. So this will always be a safe area, at least anyway, even though it will still continue to follow us potentially. So the next thing we want to do is we want to set up an NPC. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new blueprint actor. We're going to create a pawn. Uh, we'll call this uh, dialogue NPC or, or MPX, whatever, NPC. Uh, we'll open that up. If we add a new skeletal mesh, and we'll set this up to be, uh, I don't know, we'll set this up to be another one of our lovely test subject Michael, shall we? There he is. Um, I dropped my mic. <laughs> um, there he is. So let's um, set him to be the right way. And we're going to give him our animation blueprint. There he is. So he can, he can at least stand in idle mode. And then what we're going to do is we are going to give him the um, the interface that we've set up. Interact BPI. And again, we can then do what we've done the last few times, which is um, use our interact. Oh, we need to get that actually as a function. There we go. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a create widget uh, when we talk to him 
and we're going to go add to viewport and uh, that's all we need to do. And then, you know, we'll do a delay of sort of, I don't know, three seconds, maybe. And then we will uh, destroy, uh, remove parent, maybe, uh, remove from parent, there it is. I knew it was one of those, it was either destroy or remove one. Of, it's always one of the two in these situations. There we go. So, uh, and then we'll just drag those bad boys up and uh, that should be good. Now, what we actually need is a widget. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, create a widget. Now, I'm not very, I'm not um, structuring my folders very well. This is very poor folder management. Uh, so I do apologize for that. Uh, we'll call this dialogue underscore widget. And all we need to do is uh, we'll create a canvas panel. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Canvas panel, drag it out. There we go. And uh, we're going to get a uh, image. And we're going to set this to around about 400 and 100. Uh, it's got to be way bigger than that. Let's go uh, 1,200. That looks pretty reasonable. Yep. And then we're going to anchor that. So on the top right, click anchors. We're going to anchor that to the bottom. So it will basically always stay in the middle of the screen. Irrelevant when the screen gets shorter or wider. It will always stay sort of towards the bottom and in the middle. Um, so now we've done that, let's give it a bit of style. So let's, first of all, I always like to make it look black and sort of uh, about 0 0.5 on the opacity, um, which is good. If I click OK on that one. Uh, and then I also like to um, draw as, let's try to, no, that was wrong. Draw as rounded box. There we go. Just so it gives it a bit more curve. I'm going to make it a little bit wider. Let's, let's do it to like 1,100. I think the um, size is fine though. So the next thing we need to do is get a text box. So if you just type in text, you've got this text icon here. Drag that out. We'll make this the size of our image box and um, just about there. And then what I also like to do is align it to the center so that it will always um, fill out the middle first. Uh, and what I also like to do is if you come down to where it says wrapping, you can also auto wrap so that it doesn't just continue making this very long line of text. It will auto wrap it to the size of this box. Click compile and that should be good to go. We also need to anchor that text box to the bottom. Same anchor as this one so that it stays in the same position. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this, of course. Now you could just have it that you just put in whatever text you want, which is fine, but um, it means you can't really use this widget again for other MPC dialogues. So what you kind of want to do is go into your graph and, uh, oh no, sorry, go back to your designer, click on the text box and up here, call this uh, dialogue text and make it a variable. And then if we go to the graph and we find that what we can do on event construct, we'll get our dialogue text. We're going to set the text, this is what I was thinking of doing, um, like so. Uh, let's get rid of the other two. And so when this is constructed, it was it's going to set our text. And what we're going to do is we're going to promote. No, we're not. What we're going to do is we're going to get a variable. And we're going to call this text uh, info. And we're going to set this to a string. Because strings we can append, right? So if you wanted to, you could do this a few times and use an append to basically get your final text like so. And you could have it that you have multiple of these texts and plug them in like so. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it to the one. Um, I You'll notice me use appends in this way with the Ringmon tutorial. Uh, that's how I get like name and then the, the writing I want around it like for example, her, her badger used tackle. That's how I kind of get that effect is by using strings and uh, appending them together. Now, if we click on the text info variable on the left-hand side, 
we can go instance editable and expose on spawn. And what this will do is um, you'll see it now. Uh, if we click on here and we get that dialog widget, we can now type in whatever text we want for this NPC. So, for example, I could say um, I I wouldn't go out there. That thing is looking for us. Just as an example. Now you could again, you could you could set this up to be whatever you want it to be. Um, I'm just using this as an example to show you NPCs working. Now that'll stay up on screen for three seconds and it'll disappear. And we can compile and we'll go into here. And oh, I haven't put him in the world. What am I doing? Okay, sorry. Um, now there he is there. Right, he's very big. I, I just realized he's very big. He's a very tall boy. Um, let's click play and let's interact with him. Oh, he's not hitting. And why is that? Let's have a look at his details panel. Okay, so the way I fix that, by the way, is I had to come into the actual BP and come here and click custom. I set the object type to pawn and I collect uh, collision enabled uh, query and physics. And then I just change it so that it blocks. It also gets trace responses from visibility and camera as well. Um, so make sure you set that up when you're setting up this, this NPC. Otherwise, he's not going to um, select anything. Now, the other issue I had is I've clicked this and it disappears. Let's click it again. All right. And then, so you get this kind of like worried NPC now, and we're going to take this one step further. Uh, there we go. Now he, she knows where I am. So if I hide and I go off of this and I shut this up again, let's just see if she, okay. So it actually has stopped this. Um, yes. So, so what I was saying earlier about the, the nav mesh, it does actually do that. That's good. That is good. So. We now have NPCs. Now we're going to take this, as I said, one step further uh, in the sense that that's great that I can go into our NPC uh, dialogue box and set this up. But the problem with that is, is I can only ever amend it to one text box. So if we promote this to a variable called text info and we expose this one also on instance editable expose on spawn, we can compile and we can now, we should have a little text box up here that gives us that information, which is great. And now I can, what I can do is, um, oh, I've gained three there somehow. That was a weird glitch. We'll use three though, it's fine for this uh, example. So, oh God, I'm clicking on everything but what I wanna click on. Here we go. Turn that one around and turn that one around. With that exposed, I can now basically make, oh my God. I can make three different NPCs from the same bit of code. Um, let's say uh, you're going to go out there. You're crazy. You are crazy. Right. And then if we talk to this one, I'm so scared. I wouldn't go out there. That thing is looking for us. You're going out there. You're crazy. Right. And and they're all the same bit of code. I've just uh, manipulated it in a way that I can essentially use the same code, but in different circumstances. Um, and it's just a very fun way to make very uh, sort of basic talking NPCs. Uh, and there's nothing special about these guys that, you know, there's no basic logic. Their, their, their initial job is to stand there and give you a small bit of information. They're not designed to walk around or patrol or, you know, they're very, very basic. They're just there for world building dialogues. You know, you might find these in, in when you go, you're playing a medieval game, you go to a tavern and there's someone sat there at a seat and you chat to them and they will just say, oh, the weather's great today, isn't it? You know, it's just world building stuff. It's nothing 
uh, too complicated. So um, you can imagine, you know, you, you're, you're kind of, you could, the, the, the way I'd set this up is uh, essentially, you know, you could have like an office block, you're trapped in a closet with three co-workers, uh, and then this stuff going on outside, and, and it's your job to go out and, and save the day or find a way out to, to get them help. But, you know, from this, whatever this is. So, you know, I'm just kind of trying to get you some ideas on, on how to do these things. But that's very simple talking to NPCs. It's nothing too crazy. Um, the next episode, I'm actually now finally going to go into the weapon system. Uh, we're going to start with picking up weapons off the floor and ammo and stuff like that and adding that to our inventory. Um, someone made a very good comment about stacking items, so I will go over that. But um, hopefully this has been uh, helpful to you. Uh, I will see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.